Hey, Julian from AWS here. In this video, I'd like to talk about a new chip and a new instance type that we announced at reInvent. And of course, I mean the AWS Inferentia chip and the Amazon EC2 uh, INF1 instances. Um, this chip and this instance type have been designed to uh, deliver high throughput, low latency, cost-effective predictions at scale. So let me show you how to get started. Um, this is uh, based on a blog post that I wrote, uh, and of course I will put the URL in the video description, and uh, you'll find a whole bunch of, uh, of resources to learn about Inferentia, including the uh, great breakout session from ReInvent. So if you're curious about the chip itself and so on, that's where to go. But for now, let's focus on the instances. So the, the Inferentia... Um, chip uh, requires that your uh, deep learning models are uh, compiled. Um, it, uh, we support TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, and uh, ONNX models. So you could really compile the model on any, um, any instance, but we recommend that you use a, a compute optimized instance, which is why I've created uh, a C5 uh, instance here that I'll use for model compilation and I will run inference on an inf1 x large instance. So uh, I've, start, I've created those already to, um, uh, in the interest of time. Let me show you how to do this really quick. So uh, just click on launch instance as usual. And uh, you want to use the deep learning AMI the, and the latest version of the deep learning AMI because this one has pretty much everything that you need here. Um, so there's a whole bunch of instances here, and the one you want is this one, right? Um, so make sure you use version 26, which is the really, really latest one, and the AMI ID ends in 3710, okay? So this one has everything you need, uh, all the tools that we're going to use in a minute, okay? So uh, just select this AMI, go and pick um, a C5 instance maybe, and uh, this would this is the one you would use for compilation, and then you would do the same for Inferentia. Of course, you can start an, an Inferentia instance and just build and compile the model on it, that's fine. Uh, I guess for testing, that's fine. Uh, but for uh, production workloads where you would be compiling models again and again, uh, as part of your um, um, a model uh, pipeline, etc., um, that's probably a better idea to split. Okay, and that's it. Just click, 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 and and you have an instance, right? There's nothing. You don't need any particular uh, any particular setting here. Okay. All right. So I've got my instances. Now let's switch to uh, to this view. So on the left, I have my. Uh, C5 instance, okay, and if you don't see um, so on the left, I have my C5 instance, and if you don't see those environments, those conda environments that say AWS Neuron, you probably use the wrong AMI, okay? Uh, so you specifically need to see those things here. Right, you see the MXNet environment, and you see the TensorFlow environment. So, what's AWS Neuron? AWS Neuron is um, an SDK that uh, includes all the tools that we need to build uh, models and um, and then use them to predict using uh, TensorFlow, MXNet, etc., etc. Okay, so make sure you see this thing again. Otherwise, uh, you're missing the tools. Uh, that uh, that are needed here. So I'm going to work with the TensorFlow model. So I want to I'm going to work with the TensorFlow model. So I'm going to select this Conda environment. Okay, um, and this will uh, automatically um, uh, make sure that I've got the proper TensorFlow version and, and all the tools, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So the first step here is to um, bring a vanilla TensorFlow model 
and compile it. Okay, so we have a bit of code here. You can see it's not a lot of code. And um, what do we do here? So uh, the first thing that we do is basically we grab a ResNet 50 model, which is an image classifier model, pre-trained on the ImageNet dataset, a very large, um, multi-million image um, uh, dataset. And we save it in a, in a specific directory. And we save it in, in the, the saved model format, which is the standard format for TensorFlow models. Okay, so we just pull that ResNet 50 model from the collection of, uh, of TensorFlow models and we save it and then we compile it. Okay, so that's where we use that Neuron SDK. And that single line of code is really the only thing it takes, right? So this comes from this package that you see here, tensorflow.neuron, which is uh, an extension that we provide. And this is why it's important to use the deep learning MI because you want to make sure you have all those things ready. And we just say, hey, compile the model that we saved in this model directory, right? And just write it, write the compile model into this other directory. Okay? And that's it. Okay? And then we zip the compiled model directory to uh, to a zip file because that's that makes easy uh, that makes it easy to uh, to ship it to uh, to other instances and and that's where I'll use okay um, so you just run this script it runs for a few minutes so um, you know I've run it before there's nothing spectacular to see here just run you know Python compile blah 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 okay and this runs for a few minutes, and which is why you want to have a powerful instance. It is a pretty heavy process. And uh, this vanilla model is actually transformed into the hardware optimized representation for, for inferential. So uh, uh, TensorFlow operators are transformed into uh, hardware optimized operators. Okay. And we see, um, we see this uh, uh, zip file here. Okay. And if we look inside of it, all right, we do see um, the save model format. That's again the vanilla format, but this model has been optimized for inferential. Okay, so then um, I guess there are many ways you could do this, but I'm just going to copy it to uh, to a bucket, to a nest three bucket, and and that's about it, right? So you, you could ship it to your inferentia instance in, in whatever way uh, you like but you know for me it's it's just easy to copy to s3 and grab it on s3 again okay so we're done with that uh, compilation instance so we can actually uh, uh, we can actually close this okay so now i can log in to my uh, inf1 instance and i see again this um neuron enabled environment which is the one that i want okay and we have a bunch of cli tools as well uh, so neuron cc is the compiler um, we could uh, if we don't want to compile using framework apis like we've done in uh, on, on that c5 instance we can compile using cli tools uh, we have uh, a few more tools uh, that uh, that we, maybe we can look at. So Neuron uh, LS shows us how many Neuron cores are available on this instance. So this is an INT1XL instance. So it only has one inferential chip and we have four cores per chip. Okay, if we had multiple inferential chips, of course, we would see multiples of four okay um, we have the neuron cli tool that lets us list models that have been loaded okay nothing here of course uh, we can list neuron core groups so you can uh, partition those neuron cores into different groups that lets you um, 
uh, load different models on different groups. So if you have four models and you want to use a different core for each model, you can absolutely do that, etc., etc. Okay. So you know you can play around with those tools to manage uh, cores and models. All right. So here, uh, well, let's copy just for the sake of it. Okay, copy that S3 artifact again. Okay, and this is how it looks like. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is, so I'm going to move to this inf1 directory. Okay, and we see our zip file again because I've copied it before. And I extracted it here. And I've also added um, a, an intermediate directory called one. Okay, and, uh, and this is how it looks like. And I'm going to explain why I've done this. Okay, and so one contains, contains actually the, uh, the extracted model here. Because I'm going to use TensorFlow serving for, uh, for prediction. And TensorFlow serving requires that model models are uh, organized in folders uh, showing model versions okay so here of course i'm going to uh, i'm only working with one model so um, it's going to be model one right uh, here model version one okay so that's why i'm uh, i'm just extracting this into that subdirectory called one okay um, and now of course i want to try and use that model so first i'm going to use it uh, as is, right? Uh, just load the model and predict. Um, so what am I doing here? I am loading a test image that I downloaded. It's a, it's a cat image, as you could uh, probably guess. Um, I'm converting it to the right format for a ResNet 50 prediction. And this is, uh, this is vanilla TensorFlow here. I'm pointing at my model. Okay, again, don't forget that one folder. Uh, it's not needed here because I'm not using TensorFlow serving, but uh, we're going to need it later. And I'm loading the model from that saved model format. Okay, and this is a standard TensorFlow API, nothing weird here. And then uh, I'm defining the input and I'm using that model to predict. Okay, and yeah, why am I predicting a thousand times? That sounds a little silly here. So, okay, if I want to predict just once, this is how I'm going to do it, right? And then print predictions. Okay, so if we run this thing, it's going to load the saved model from the directory, and there you go, it prints uh, predictions, right? So that's how you do, yeah, that's how you do it. And again, none of this code is neuron specific right you can see all the imports here are vanilla tensorflow imports and we use tf country predictor which is the standard way of predicting with uh, tensorflow models okay so you you won't have to change a line of code in your uh, in your prediction code which i think is pretty cool okay so that's for a quick test i guess that's that's all right now, of course, in production, we probably want to use TensorFlow serving. So let's start TensorFlow serving. Okay, so the actual line would be this, right? And we're using TensorFlow model server neuron. That's, a, again, a neuron enabled version that's included in the deep learning AMI. Uh, we're passing the name of the model that we want to work on. This is a user defined and the, of course the location of the model. Okay. And again, this is why we need that one directory because we're loading a model one. We can see it here. Yeah. All right. If you're not familiar with TensorFlow serving, this looks weird, but uh, I mean, you're, you're really used to it. Uh, okay. And so I can see my model server is listening on port uh, 8500. Fine. So let's just send this guy to the background here. All right, let's take a look at the prediction script. So this is a really simple one. Um, what do we do here? We load the test image and we build a prediction request for a model called ResNet50, which is the name we gave to the model when we loaded it. And then 
we build, uh, we send the prediction request to TensorFlow serving and get results, print them out, right? And once again, this is completely standard TensorFlow. You can see there's nothing specific about Neuron here. So again, that means you can use your prediction code um, unmodified, right? Um, the only reason where you, uh, you, you, you'd modify this Okay, so let's take a look at the prediction script. Um, from the imports, we can see there's nothing specific about Neuron here. So we're using completely standard APIs to, uh, to use TensorFlow serving here. Okay, so that's good news. Again, you won't have to modify it. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the prediction script. We can see from the imports that there's nothing specific uh, about Neuron. We just use the standard TensorFlow APIs for, uh, for TensorFlow serving. So that's good news because it means you would not have to change uh, any prediction code. Just uh, use it as is and, and it's going to be fine, right? If you want more advanced scenarios when where you would have multi-threaded prediction, you would um, uh, use multiple cores across multiple chips. There are a few lines of code to add, but uh, you'll find examples um, uh, referenced in the blog post. But again, nothing nothing bad. And I, I expect in most cases, you, know, you can absolutely use your code unmodified. So what do we do here? Uh, we load the image, we build a prediction request for the ResNet 50 model that we loaded, we send the request and we print results. Okay, so let's run the script. Okay, let's run the script. All right, and we see predictions, okay? Um, so here, we're just running one, but I you know, of course, you would want to run many more. So, um, you know, I guess that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. Uh, again, please uh, please check the blog post for, uh, for additional information on the chip. And there's a really, really cool a workshop that was delivered at reInvent that dives pretty deep on Inferentia and uh, Inf1 instances, showing you uh, how to do uh, you know multi-threaded predictions and uh, and there's a benchmark in there and in profiling information using TensorBot, etc. It's it's really really uh, interesting and uh, well worth your time. Well, I guess that's it for this one. Uh, see you later. Bye bye.